has the brain evolved? Sponges can help unravel the mystery. Sponges are simple creatures that are experts at filtering their food. Every day, they filter thousands of liters of water to collect food. They are masters of this complicated procedure, which is all the more remarkable since they don't have a brain, not even a single neuron. Sponges use an intricate cellular communication system to regulate nutrition and get rid of invading bacteria. The new findings may help us understand how nervous systems in animals evolved, said biologist Casey Dunn of Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut. This is a really exciting study that allows us to see sponges in a whole new light, said Dunn. The research was published in Science. Cells can communicate with each other. Neurons do this by transmitting electrical or chemical signals through tiny, directed connections called synapses. Previous research has shown that while sponges don't have neurons, they do have genes that encode proteins that typically help synapses function. To discover where the message transmitting genes are expressed in freshwater sponges, Spongilla lacustris. The researchers sequenced RNA in different cells. Detlev Arendt, an evolutionary biologist at the European Molecular Biology Laboratory, EMBL, in Heidelberg, and colleagues led the analysis. Experts have discovered that the sponge has 18 different types of cells. Synaptic genes were active in several of them, clustered around the digestive chambers. This may lead to the conclusion that some form of cellular communication coordinates the animal's filtration behavior. The researchers used X-ray imaging and electron microscopy to study one type of cell they called secretory neuroid cells. Studies have revealed that these cells have long arms that reach choanocytes, a type of cell with hair-like projections that drive sponges' water flow systems and capture most of their food. The relationship between these cell types and the expression of genes that can secrete chemicals indicates that similar arms allow the cells analyzed to communicate with choanocytes. This allows them to hold back the water flow system and remove any impurities or foreign microbes from the body. However, these neuroid cells are not nerves. And there is no sign of synapses that allow neurons to communicate quickly. This cell type may be an evolutionary precursor to a true nervous system, says study co-author Jacob Musser, an evolutionary biologist at EMBL. We're at a midpoint. We've gone from having all the independent elements to combining them more broadly. But we haven't yet got all the answers that will enable us to create a synapse, says Musser. Some scientists argue that calling these cells the precursor of the nervous system is far-fetched. This is a very interesting finding, but the results are not definitive says Linda Holland, an evolutionary biologist at the University of California, San Diego. According to her, it will be difficult to prove that nervous systems evolved from this type of cellular communication. Indeed, many organisms, including single-celled eukaryotes, share the same synaptic genes, says Sally Lees a biologist at the University of Alberta in Edmonton, Canada. Geneticist April Hill of Bates College, Lewiston, hopes other scientists will use the latest study as a launching platform for further research into the ubiquitous sponge. The key question still remains whether other sponges use a similar cellular communication system. Crusader hand grenades. New analysis of artifacts from nearly 1,000 years ago. A new analysis of pottery from Jerusalem from the 11th to 12th centuries seems to confirm earlier assumptions that some specific jugs may have been used as medieval hand grenades during the time of the Crusades. Spherical archaeological artifacts, rounded at the top, 
with a base resembling a cone, are found in museums around the world. Historians have long wondered what they could have been used for. There are many hypotheses. Some talk about carrying liquids, others about using them as smoking pipes. The versatility and variety of uses of similar vessels has been well documented. But new research suggests that one of their functions may have been to carry explosives. The latest analysis covered four vessels found in 1961-67 in the Armenian Garden in the old city of Jerusalem. The artifacts are now housed at the Royal Ontario Museum. Experts decided to look at the remains found inside the vessels. One of them turned out to contain explosive-like material. The research was published in PLOS One. Our research shows that the use of these unique ceramic vessels was diverse. One of them was carrying explosives. According to archaeologist Carney Matheson of Griffith University in Australia, during the time of the Crusades, it was reported that these vessels were used as grenades thrown against Crusader strongholds, emitting loud noises and bright flashes of light, he adds. Using various chemical tests, the researchers determined that the three vessels most likely contained fragrance oils and medications. And that's what similar artifacts were usually used for. The fourth vessel, a very thick walled stoneware pot without any ornamentation, contained residues that indicated the possibility of storing chemicals or explosives. Components such as sulfur, mercury and magnesium were detected in it, with levels of these substances higher than in the other vessels and the surrounding soil. Previous research has suggested that similar pots may have been used to store gunpowder invented in China in the 9th century. However, the research team believes that the chemical mix points to a different explosive. The tests showed that it was not black powder, but probably another explosive developed in that part of the world, says Matheson. Researchers have not ruled out other potential uses for the fourth pot. It may have been a source of fuel for the lamp or a container for oils, as it was also found to contain fatty acids. However, the researchers believe that the medieval pomegranate hypothesis is worthy of further consideration, due to the shape, size and thickness of the vessel, among other things. Historical accounts of battles, including the Siege of Jerusalem in 1187, mention the use of hand grenade-like weapons. And relics similar to the one described in this study have also been found elsewhere. This is another clue for researchers who want to understand how war was fought thousands of years ago. It is still unknown what exactly was in these medieval hand grenades. Some believe it was a mixture known as Greek fire. However, to this day it is not known what was part of this weapon. Further studies of similar vessels and their contents will help us understand medieval technology and the history of explosive weapons in the eastern Mediterranean, Matheson said.